Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I'm really excited to be able to bring to you a topic that is a little bit more detailed and intricate, but I know that after working with thousands of sellers and seeing over a thousand success stories, uh, utilizing the, the trainings that I've put together, uh, which you can see over 500 of them at askjimmysmith.com forward slash success. But in all those people that I've worked with through the course and the book and other trainings I've done, I see a lot of questions from newer Amazon sellers that are getting stuck and held up by the uh, account reserve on their Amazon account. And so I wanted to kind of give uh, as best of a uh, tip that I can for those of you that are newer and you're trying to deal with the account reserve on your Amazon payouts uh, and ultimately trying to figure out how to manage the cash flow that's coming in from Amazon because it can be very difficult if Amazon's holding $900, $1,000 or more or less even, if they're holding any amount of money, it can be difficult to plan for how much inventory you can buy and, and how much uh, you can really grow and scale this business. And so I wanted to put together uh, just a resource on what I think is the best way to handle it, which is utilizing the profit first method of bookkeeping. Now, uh, as I'll mention later uh, in the end of this, I've actually got a slideshow for you again today. So I know some of you love the slideshows, some of you do not, but uh, it's the best way that I can talk about it. Um, but there is a book called Profit First, and then there's also a book called Profit First for e-commerce sellers. And so uh, I recommend checking those out. If you're just selling in e-commerce, then Profit First for e-commerce sellers is probably the way to go. Uh, if you're interested in the original book that uh, you know is used for any business, then Profit First uh, is the name of the book. Book that you can check out. Uh, but just as a disclaimer, which I'll give whenever I uh, open up the presentation, I am not an accountant. I'm not a bookkeeper. And I'm also not affiliated in any way with Profit First. Uh, so don't take my advice, uh, you know, as gospel, so to speak. Don't make sure that, uh, or make sure that ultimately, uh, whatever you decide to do from an accounting and bookkeeping standpoint is done with an accountant, with a licensed bookkeeper, uh, so that you're not just listening to my advice. These are just the things that I have heard and seen. And I wanted to give you uh, my uh, you know, viewpoint on Profit First as a whole. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the presentation uh, and we can move forward with uh, what Profit First is, uh, why it's something that you can use, how it will help your business, and then ultimately how to set up your uh, banking allocations uh, in a decent way so that you can manage your cash flow and your Amazon payouts better. Okay. So as I said, this is the disclaimer. I've got a written one on here for you. I'm not a tax or bookkeeping advisor or specialist. I have nothing to do with Profit First, the company in any way. These are just my opinions on it. So make sure to consult with your accountant or bookkeeper for professional advice. Uh, obviously, I have to put that up there. And it's always a great idea if you're dealing with numbers, taxes, bookkeeping, to actually talk to somebody that handles that stuff. Uh, now, actually, my mother uh, is a a CPA. She's been one for her entire adult life uh, and, and has currently an accounting firm that she owns that you can check out at ecommerceaccountingllc.com. That's ecommerceaccountingllc.com. There's other uh, Profit First professionals as well that exist out there that if you're just looking for bookkeeping and not tax advice, you could go to as well. So just wanted to put that out there as well. Now, what is Profit First? So Profit First is based on Parkinson's Law. Uh, and Parkinson's Law essentially says that no matter how much money that you earn in your lifetime or in a year, that people end up spending the entire amount uh, and a little bit more than that, on top of that entire amount, their expenses rise in lockstep with their earnings. So if you're making, let's just say $10,000 uh, in a month, well, then you're going to have typically based off Parkinson's law, you're probably spending about 10,000 plus maybe an extra 500 or a thousand dollars, right? If you're making $5,000 a month, you're probably going to spend 5,000 plus a little bit more on top of that, uh, which is typical. It's why we see so many uh, issues with debt in, in the United States specifically. It's also why uh, you know it can be very difficult to get out of debt because our expenses tend to rise with the amount of money that we're making. Um, so the more that you have, the more you spend, essentially, as well. The less you have, the more you can serve. You know, if you went from ten thousand dollars down to five thousand dollars in income, well, most likely you're going to lower your expenses down to about that five thousand dollar mark, and you're probably going to be still spending a little bit more, uh, which is one of the issues uh, that that we can see just throughout the country and throughout the world as people get rid of debt uh, and they're ultimately, they've got more money, well, then they start spending more money and it puts them back into debt. So 
Ultimately, you want to make sure that whatever you're spending, you are making more than that amount, FYI, but essentially profit first is based off this principle and uh, it will help you to avoid that as much as possible. Now, uh, it also starts with the end in mind. And I think this is extremely important. That's why it's called profit first. This is the goal in business. The goal is to make money. The goal is to profit on your business. And so we are starting as we get disbursements from Amazon or as we get cash into our businesses, we are starting by taking the profit first out of that money. And I believe that's extraordinarily important. It will motivate you. It's something that will keep you going because you're seeing profits start to build up in your account. You're not just getting $1,000 and spending Spending eleven hundred, right? You're not getting five thousand dollars and spending five thousand dollars. You're you're taking some profit off the top first for your business. Um, and then also it prepares you for the expenses. So uh, if you do have expenses in your business, as every business does, you're going to ultimately see that uh, this helps you to allocate for those expenses as well moving forward. Um, so with the typical business, you're going to see that usually what happens with bookkeeping is it's sales. So you're making $10,000 of sales in the month minus your expenses, everything that you spend equals your profit. And so whatever is left over is what you're going to make. Uh, but with the profit first method, you're taking your sales, you're subtracting out a percentage for profit, and then you are left with how much you can spend on expenses. So this is going to help you to see, okay, well, I have this much money left over that I need to uh, put towards the expenses side of my business. Um, obviously, this is a different way of thinking, but it is more motivating and it is uh, a better way to kind of prepare for some of the other things that can come up in business uh, as you grow, because you're going to have some extra money in the profit account, some extra money in some of these other accounts I'll show you here in just a little bit. Now, here's some reasons to use profit first. First, if you are not seeing any profit in your business, especially as Amazon businesses and, and new sellers, it can be easy to not see any profit because you're constantly trying to buy inventory. And so this will help you to start seeing some profits. Even if you decide not to take the profit and spend on yourself, if you decide to put that back into the business, which if you're new, I, that's typically what I recommend if you don't need to live off the money, um, but it still helps you to see that there is profit in the business uh, because it can be easy to miss as you continue to buy inventory if you aren't allocating for it first. Uh, if you're having trouble managing the cash flow from your Amazon disbursements, as I mentioned earlier, I believe this is the way to kind of remedy that uh, a little bit better. But again, talk to your accountant and bookkeeper to make sure because they might have other ways that would be better for you. Uh, if you're panicking about tax bills, you know, as you sell in your first year of Amazon and you go through the whole year and you're excited because you've made some money, uh, whether you see it or not, uh, the uh, taxes are going to be due on that profit that you've made. And so Profit First also has an allocation to put away some money for taxes. And I think that's extremely important as well, especially um, you know, some people are really good with managing money and some people aren't. And so having a separate uh, account for your taxes can be very good so you don't get caught in a bad situation in, during tax season in the next year. Now, if you don't know if you can outsource this, the next thing, because this can help you to allocate for that. It can help you set aside profit for growth. Uh, it gives you a lot more ability to say, okay, I do have some extra money coming in so I can put that towards adding employees or an independent contractor or a virtual assistant or some extra software. This will help you to do that as well. If you don't know how much you can spend on inventory, this will tell you. Uh, so if you're just like, okay, I see this money coming in from Amazon, but how much do I have to spend on inventory and how do I uh, decide what to spend? You know, uh, this is the way that if you have one separate account for just your inventory, you can just look at your bank account and say, okay, I've got $2,000 or I have $15,000 to spend on inventory for this, uh, this period of time, because you will have an inventory account in your business. And then if you don't know if you should buy that new course or coaching, this will help too, because you can look at your profit account. You can look at some of the other accounts that you've got in your business and say, cool, I do have that money. Um, you don't have to worry about, well, if I buy this and I can't buy inventory, you can say, awesome, I have some extra money here to buy that new course or coaching or whatever it is you're looking to purchase in your business. Also, businesses are designed to consume cash unless you design it differently. So profit first is all about intentionality, making sure that you aren't just getting all this cash flow from your business and spending it because you have it. It's about being intentional with where you place your money into different bank accounts uh, and then being able to use those bank accounts for the purposes with which you set them up. You 
you need to make sure you're designing your business differently and with intention so that you don't just spend the money on crazy things or willy nilly. So you aren't buying a $5,000 coaching package from someone and then realize, oh, I have to put this all on a credit card because I don't have the money. You need to make sure that you've got the money set aside properly so you can use, use it in the right way. All right, now let's talk about profit first allocations because there are different bank accounts that you will need to be setting up uh, with profit first. Um, so these are going to be suggested targets. These are not the rules. I've done a lot of uh, research, whether it's from the books, uh, I've seen different suggestions on articles and websites. So these are just suggested targets. They are not the rules that you have to do. So uh, whatever I'm giving here, you can adjust them. You can meet with your bookkeeper and your accountant and adjust these targets. But these are the ones that I saw as most common. These are not my suggestions, just what I saw out on the interwebs. Uh, and so the first one is profit. So as we talked, it's profit first. You're taking 10% of whatever money you receive and putting it towards a profit account. Uh, the next one is owner's compensation. So this might sound different, but profit is something where you're just taking additional money so that then you can uh, you know, live accordingly. You can have that extra kind of bonus money, in my opinion, but you can also take that profit and pour it back into the business. Well, owner's compensation at 15% of the capital that you get uh, is going to ultimately uh, allow you to pay yourself. So you're paying yourself on each disbursement as well, if you desire. Uh, you don't have to. You can roll it all back into the business as we'll talk about later, but you can do that and have owner's compensation at 15%. The next one is inventory at 20%. Uh, so you're trying to add additional amounts to your inventory um, to your inventory budget each, and each time that you get a payment, and it's 20% of that. Taxes at 15%. Again, this is very important because if your taxes are going to be 30 or 40% because you're making so much, make sure that you have the right allocation set aside for this. Uh, so I would definitely talk to your accountant on that. Your operating expenses. So that's what OPEX is. Your operating expenses would be 40%. So whatever you're making, you are allocating about 40% of the capital to go towards your operating expenses, which could be warehouse inven or warehouse uh, uh, utilities. Sorry, I almost said inventory, but warehouse utilities, employees, independent contractors, virtual assistants, software, uh, et cetera. All these other things that go into your operating expenses, supplies, all of that. So that would make up the 100%, right? We've got 100% of the money we're receiving is now allocated in five different accounts. And so typically what most people suggest and uh, what I've seen at least online is to set up five different bank accounts. One that's a profit bank account, one that's an owner's compensation bank account, one that's an inventory bank account, one's at taxes and one that's operating expenses. So you can look at those specific accounts and see how much money is in each of those to, to be utilized in your business or um, for the purposes with which that you set them up for. So there are different banks. Some banks have ridiculous fees for doing this. Some banks are better than others. I did not look into what banks you could use. I'm sure you could find out fairly easily, uh, but you just need to make sure they don't have some crazy fees for setting up so many different accounts or monthly fees or even disbursements. Sometimes banks will have different disbursement fees if you're uh, taking it from one account and moving it into a bunch of different other ones. So if you aren't doing this currently... I suggest that you start with 1% or 3% or 5% to your profit account. You don't want to just take the money that you're used to receiving and placing back into your business. Uh, you don't want to just all of a sudden take 10% from that and put it into your profit account. You want to make sure that you're starting slowly and that you understand the system, right? You don't want to jump into the deep end of the pool without knowing how to swim first. And so it does take a process to get used to this. It will take time, but it will help as you get used to it moving forward in your business. You ultimately want to kind of go slowly with this. Maybe set up one or two accounts. Don't set up all five. Uh, and then do smaller percentages first versus doing the whole big percentages that I gave earlier. Look at your business numbers and see what your actual percentages are. Um, this is key, right? Maybe your operating expenses are only about 30% of your business. Well, if that's the case, sweet. Put the other 10%, instead of it being 40, put the other 10% in something else. Or maybe your taxes are a 30% tax rate or tax bracket because you make so much in other things or in your business. Well, okay, then that means don't put 15% away for taxes, put 30% away for taxes. So definitely take a look at that with a licensed professional to, to see that your percentages are set up properly. Uh, start slowly working towards the numbers that you want to hit. Now set one bank account up. So you probably have one bank account set up for Amazon if we're talking about Amazon disbursements. So have that bank account um, if it's best for this purpose. 
set up to automatically then spread the money to the correct accounts each month. Uh, you can get them set up that way. Um, you just want to make sure that they're all connected so that you can do the disbursements either immediately or you can do the disbursements maybe once every week or every month, whatever it is in your, your decision, you can do that. But if you have one main bank account that holds the initial payment, then you can spread out the others. Or you could take one bank account that's for operating expenses and have it all go in there and disperse the others out. It's up to you, but that's just the suggestion that I saw online and wanted to put it out there for you. Now, here's some problems with Profit First before we really get into an example. But in the early stages, it can lead to slow or no growth, right? If you're uh, trying to, instead of pouring every dollar back into your business, if you're setting up multiple accounts for different things, well, it's going to slow down your growth a little bit, but it will give you uh, the ability to ultimately be prepared for these different scenarios that can pop up, such as taxes and other operating expenses. And maybe you want to buy a course or uh, coaching of some sort and uh, adding money and taking money out of the business for profit. So it can lead to that. And I'll go through kind of my suggestion, depending on your situation, for how to use profit first as best as possible. But the percentages can actually stifle your growth. So make sure that you set them up properly. You need to monitor your business and how your business is growing uh, with this method, right? Maybe you get into it and you're doing this for two or three months and you're really struggling with growing. Um, well, maybe it's the allocations and you can uh, adjust those so that you can grow more. Uh, make sure that you're monitoring this. This is not just a hard and fast rule that works in every situation. It's something to work with your bookkeeper or accountant and get set up properly so you can continue to grow uh, in your business. Now, having multiple bank accounts can be confusing and lead to more fees or expenses with your bank and your bookkeeper or accountant. Keep that in mind. Some bookkeepers, uh, many accountants and many bookkeepers actually, instead of some, will charge you um, additional fees for having multiple bank accounts uh, set up to be pulled into to, uh, whether QuickBooks or what other, whatever other accounting software you use. So it can add extra expenses by having these multiple bank accounts. If you're really good with money and you're fine having one bank account and having a spreadsheet set up for how much money you have each month in there based off of your disbursements versus how much you spent. You can do that. Uh, so maybe you set up a spreadsheet that each disbursement, you take the 10% for profit and the you know 15% for taxes, et cetera, and you just put how much went into that. And then you can see that. You can check that amount to see how much that you have uh, willing and available um, to you to spend on inventory or other things. Uh, if, but you can also find banks that don't have a problem with this. You can find bookkeepers that don't add much to this or accountants that don't add much. Uh, it really depends on who you work with. I just wanted to say this is sometimes a problem for people that are using Profit First. Now, here's some example allocations. So as I went um, earlier, here's how it should be done based off those allocations. Uh, again, this is not me saying you should do it this way, but this is how it should be done based off what we said earlier. So if you got $10,000 in sales, um, and that's that's the key number, that's just your total sales. Well, Amazon, let's just say they take approximately 40% of your total sales. So you're going to get a $6,000 disbursement from Amazon in this particular example. Well, uh, your cost of goods sold and your inventory for those sales uh, was $3,500 in the $10,000 in sales example. So you want to take off the cost of goods sold first. So you take your $6,000 disbursement that you received minus the inventory you used to purchase it, which equals $2,500 left over that now you're going to use for those allocations. So your profit is 2,500 times 10%. As we said, that's the allocation we chose. If you choose a different one, use a different one. But that would give you $250 into your profit account. Your owner's compensation at 15% would give you $375 into your profit account. Your inventory would be 20%. So that's $500 into your inventory account. Your taxes at 15% is $375. And your operating expenses at 40% is $1,000 for your software and other subscriptions and, and operating expenses there. Now, um, let me make sure. Yeah, leave uh, an inventory line. So the reason I'm saying that is because some people will take inventory out because they're already accounting for it in their cost of goods sold that they took out up here, the $3,500. Uh, so you want to have essentially an inventory line where you're saying, all right, well, the $6,000 
Uh, I sold $3,500 of inventory. So $3,500 is going into my inventory bank account. But with that additional $2,500 that I have left over, I'm going to put an additional $500 in there. So now I have $4,000 to spend on inventory. So that will allow you to grow your business because instead of spending $3,500 on inventory, you can now spend $4,000 on inventory, which gets you to grow in sales. And then as you grow, then your inventory amounts continue to grow because you're out allocating 20% whatever's left over the 20% there to go on top of your other inventory. So that's what can help you to grow in your business. Um, that's the purpose of it. Um, now, I wanna make sure that I address this. I bolded these first four bullet points. If you started this business, let's say with $1,000 and uh, you're trying to get it to grow as fast as possible, technically you could take the money from all of these accounts and put them back into inventory to grow your inventory if you want to. But if you aren't the best with managing money uh, and you're having trouble with managing it, then having these allocations will help you to make the best decisions moving forward. Maybe as you go through six months of this and you've built up your profit account, you can say, you know what? I want to grow a little bit faster. So I'm going to take all the profit out of my profit account and I'm going to put it into my inventory account to spend. All of these uh, you can actually spend throughout the year. Now, taxes is a little bit of a different situation. Uh, you could technically continue to use that to grow your business until you get through to the next year um, so that then you can sell a bunch of inventory to pay off the taxes. I don't really recommend doing that, but it is something that you can do. You want to make sure that you can pay your taxes at the end of the year based off of what your bookkeeper and accountant tells you. And I at least wanted to bold these things so you know that you can add those into inventory if you desire at any time, uh, but make sure it's the right financial decision with your accountant. Now let's talk about the profit and the taxes. So this is as starting as a side hustle to grow your business. If you've got a full-fledged business uh, with employees and all of that on Amazon or an e-commerce business, then you're gonna want different allocations, maybe even more allocations for specific things. Uh, you know, maybe you'll have like an employee training allocation and, and, and it won't go into your operating expenses. It would be a separate bank account. You can do a lot of things as you grow your business, but this is just as you're starting a side hustle. Now, once you hit the point where you wanna do this full-time and live off of it, using profit first will be beneficial. You wanna make sure that you do allocate for profit. So um, it's up to you on how you wanna do this. If you decide to use profit first, it will be nice to have that extra profit account built up so you can continue to see those profits pour into your business. As long as you keep spending more each month on inventory, and that is key, you need to make sure that you're not taking too much money out because if you're typically spending $5,000 a month, well, you're going to always be selling the same amount. If you're spending $5,000 one month and $6,000 the next month and $7,000 the next month on inventory, well, your sales should grow in alignment or in conjunction with those um, you know, uh, amounts of inventory that you're buying. So I believe it's extraordinarily important to uh, continue to grow your inventory account and your spend on inventory if your goal is to continue to grow your business and sales and profit from there. Uh, now with taxes, again, it's something you need to make sure that you have that money set aside. So it's up to you. Some people I do know will do profit first and they'll pour all the money of taxes in back into inventory for 10 months so they can utilize that capital to buy inventory that's making them more money. And then in the last two months of the year, they're pulling out uh, a lot of money from their, uh, their allocations to go to taxes. I also know people that will do taxes and have a separate account that they use throughout the whole entire year. And at the end of the year, they've got the taxes there for them. There's a ton of options and opportunity there, but it is important to make sure that you allocate for this as you're growing your business. Now, uh, a resource, I put resources, but it's one resource, Profit First for E-commerce Sellers. That, that's the name of the book that I'd recommend if you're just doing e-commerce. If you want to see the first original book of Just Profit First, which has, uh, it was written by Michael McCallowitz or something. I can't remember how to say his name. Uh, I believe I have the book actually. Yeah, it's Mike McCallowitz. Yeah, Mike McCallowitz. So Profit First is the original book, uh, but Profit First for e-commerce sellers was written by uh, somebody that had more e-commerce experience and they worked with Mike from the original book to make this e-commerce sellers version. Now, lastly, talk to your accountant or bookkeeper. Please do not take my advice on this. Obviously, I, I've said that multiple times. It's important to do that and to, to make the right decisions financially for your business. So hopefully this was something that helped you. Uh, I, I hope that ultimately you see this in a different light, that if you are struggling with having a certain amount of disbursements sent into your, your account from Amazon because they're holding back some capital reserves, well, then now you at least know where you should allocate the money 
uh, as best as possible in your business. If you want to continue to pour it all back into inventory, that will help you to grow a little bit faster. But it can also become a problem if, if you're not taking out money for taxes or not taking out money for profit or for your own compensation. So uh, it's really up to you. I wanted to put this out there for those of you that may be struggling with the disbursements issue from Amazon or any other uh, platform you might be using. And uh, hopefully this is something that helps and you can find a bookkeeper or an accountant that knows about Profit First and can help you uh, tremendously with that. I have a friend uh, currently at the time of this recording named Chris Loveless that uh, does bookkeeping for Profit First uh, sellers. And so if you need that information, uh, just post that below in the comments and I can give you that information as well. Uh, so happy to recommend him. Uh, and also uh, my mom for e-commerce accounting, LLC.com. She does taxes. Again, she's a CPA and uh, has an accounting firm to help e-commerce sellers with their taxes at ecommerceaccountingllc.com. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, I hope that you have a great rest of your day and that this was something that helped you and blessed you. If you could please leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know any questions that come up. Again, I'm not a licensed professional, so I'll do my best, but if it's something specific about taxes or accounting or bookkeeping, I'm going to direct you to somebody else uh, or, you know, to reach out to your own accountant or bookkeeper, but please post your questions below. Also like uh, this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. It's really helping me uh, to get encouraged and motivated to do more and to help you as much as I can. And so I hope that this channel helps you and, and blesses you. So have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.